As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mihal Sham from Irrelevant Securities. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yes, thank you, Tanvi. On behalf of Edelweiss, I would like to welcome you all to the Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Vice Prime India Limited. I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Abhinandan Singh, Head Group Investor Relations at Vice Prime Group, to introduce the management and take it further. Over to you, Abhinandan. Thanks, Nihar, and good, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Vice Prime India, I welcome all of you to the company's Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Rajesh Mandaiwala, Managing Director. Ms. Dipali Goenka, CEO and Joint Managing Director, uh, and Mr. Sanjay Gupta, the company's CFO. As usual, we will start the forum with some opening remarks by our leadership team, and then we will open the floor for your questions. Once the call gets over, should you have any queries that remain unanswered post the earnings call, feel free, feel, feel free to reach out to uh, either myself or Sanjay Gupta. And with that, I would like to hand over the floor to Ms. Dipali Goenka, our CEO and Joint MD. Over to you, Dipali. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. We hope that you are safe and in good health. I would like to share some perspectives on the operating highlights of a performance during FI22, after which Sanjay would take you through the financial matrix. The company has delivered a strong top-line performance for FI22 with revenues growing at 26.6% to 9,377 crores. In quarter four, revenues grew by 3% year-on-year to reach 2,247 crores. Having crossed 1 billion revenue mark for the total company, the core business of home textiles crossed the milestone of U.S. $1 billion mark this year with the revenues of 8,791 crores growing 23.3% year-on-year. Innovation continued to be a key enabler, propelled by a patented products and processes accounting for 27% of HT revenues in FI22, growing by 6% year on year. We now have 35 patents filed globally, largest for any home textile player. Emerging businesses or brands, e-commerce, flooring, and advanced textiles continued on a strong growth trend up by 44% year-on-year, accounting for 26% of total revenues of the company, up from 23%. Domestic retail businesses grew by 66% year-on-year in FI22 to reach the highest ever revenues, and also grew by 23.5% year-on-year in quarter four. We have seen 150% growth in awareness for brand wealth fund from 6% to 15% this year. Each brand under domestic business faces and has independently become power brands. Reach of brand wealth fund now covers 482 towns and 6,642 stores, adding 1,218 stores in quarter four. We launched a new product category, mattresses, addition to home textile products. Despite the unprecedented increases in cost of products, we are able to maintain the margins in our domestic business. Wellspun D2C initiatives globally is steadily making us an SMCG of home textiles with e-commerce and branded business continuing its upward trajectory during the year, growing by 40% and accounting for 16% of total revenues. Let's say we had a successful launch of three brands during the course of the year, Well Home. This is the operator. Sorry, uh, Dipali, ma'am, we can't hear you. Participants, please hold while we reconnect the management line.
is the operator. We have the line for management reconnected. Ma'am, we just request you to please proceed. Yeah. 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 The flooring business continue to achieve new milestones, growing by 107% in FY22 to 661 crores, costing 7% of the top line, and in quarter four grew by 60% year on year. Continuing on a focus on innovation in flooring as well, we have now two patents to our name. Near geographies in Africa, Middle East, and Far East have been added, and repeat orders from existing large customers is very encouraging. Domestic business is shaping up very robustly with a brand reach of 260 million in FY22. There has been considerable marketing investment on both offline side in terms of ad films, related branding, and social media, and on the online side with a refreshed site and improved traffic. True to our sustainability goals, flooring also is embedding ESG and circularity. Like Zero Landfill Company, from they achieved zero waste certification from LCS team for attaining certification with 98% waste diversion from landfill. We have conducted life cycle assessment for all products and have verified third party environmental products declaration. 15% of total energy is from renewable energy rice husk and target taken up to 25% by 2025 and 50% by 2030. Zero liquid discharge operation from the day one of operation. Wellspun has been at the front runner in the industry encompassing sustainability and ESG in every realm of operations. We are clearly differentiated in the, in the industry due to our sustainability work and have set benchmarks for the industry as a whole. Like multi-level traceability solution of WellTrack allows the consumer to track a finished bed bath product to its raw material source using blockchain. We had the first Dow Jones Sustainability Index, DJSI, a seller, with an ESG rating of 48, which is 62% higher than the average industry score. We have set up ESG Compass, an integrated ESG digital platform, an automated data dashboard covering over 90 indicators extending to all sites, locations, and subsidiaries in India. We have joined SBTI Business Ambition for 1.5 degree centigrade campaign and is committed to set a robust emission reduction target at the pace and scale required by climate science. Our job facility has the first prize winner in the best industry category at the Union Jal Shakti Minister Third National Water Awards 2020 for the STP operations and zero fresh water usage. Tesco, UK's leading retailer, awarded sustainability and community of exceptional focus on community initiatives and for outstanding ethical performance. Other emerging businesses of advanced textiles recorded a revenue of crores in quarter four, growing 17% quarter, quarter on quarter, despite the headwinds that the business faced due to higher logistics costs and spunless demand remaining muted due to stock corrections. These headwinds resulted in the yearly revenues of advanced textiles, 297 crores, 4% below last year. In March 2022, we, com we commenced commercial operations in a Telangana facility, which has an installed capacity in 1,729 metric tons per annum of spun lace. This augurs well for this segment's prospects going forward. During the second half of the year, and also during quarter four of FY22, we faced multiple headwinds that include extraordinary macroeconomic factors, such as sharp and unprecedented rise in key raw material prices, increase in energy costs, and disruptions in the global supply chain, which has further worsened due to Ukraine-Russia conflict. To give you a snapshot, Courtlook index has moved up from 92.5 cents pounds in March 21 to 142 cents in March 22, and currently is at 159, an increase of 75%. In India, Shankar 6 has reached them higher for rupees 93,000 candy currently, the highest level ever recorded, up almost 100% as compared to March 21. Today, the prevailing rate is 100,000 per candy. Coal price index as per ICI for GAR 4,200 increased by almost 150% in last one year. In addition, the ocean freight of coal import during the same time tripled. Ocean freight rates during the year similarly has increased about 3x during the last year. Spot rates for USC C rose from 4,500 quarter four FI21 to 11,000 container in quarter four FI22, a 144 increase. In addition, container shortages, port congestion, and a shortage of trucker in the United States, which is our primary end market, have all resulted in noticeable, albeit, 
transitory operating challenge. Therefore, mentioned factors have, as you may have noticed, weighed on our operating performance, especially during the latter half of the year, which is reflected in a quarter for F2 results as well. During quarter four, FY22, the company's revenues grew 3% year on year. On a sequential basis, however, revenues witnessed a slight decline of 8% quarter and quarter on account of some rebalancing of demand due to correction in stocks, as indicated by us during the last quarter, precipitated primarily by logistics and supply chain challenges. The global economic situation has further worsened in the latter half of quarter four. And as we enter the new financial year, high inflations in Western economies leading to decades high interest rates and slackening of demand across categories, logistical challenges getting more acute with non-availability of containers, leading to continually rising ocean freight and cotton index, scaling newer historical heights every day. In such unparalleled turbulent times, we are taking these steps free to ensure that we continue our dialogues and long-term partnerships with our customers. Keep keen eye on our operating costs and further innovate and value engineer our products. We believe that the business sentiments which have deteriorated over the last few months would take a few quarters to resolve and ease itself. Hence, while the medium to long-term fundamentals of the business remain strong, the next couple of quarters are a bit challenging for the business. Following the, following the global currently, as and when the commodity prices normalize and inflationary pressures abate, our operating performance would reflect that. With this, I would now like to hand over to Sanjay, who will quickly take you through the financial highlights. Over to you. Thank you, Dipan. Uh, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Before we open the forum for questions, I will briefly discuss the financial highlights for the quarter and full year financial year 22. During quarter four financial year 22, we reported revenues of 247 crore and increase of 3% year on year. For the fiscal year financial year 22, revenue increased by 27% to 9377 crore, up from 7408 crore in financial year 21. I am particularly pleased to share that during the financial year 2022, the company achieved highest ever sales volume in bath linen, bed linen, and rugs and carpets. Bath linen sales volume in bed, bath linen sales volume increased by 1%, bed linen sales volume increased by 6%, and rugs by 19% in quarter in financial year 22. We reported an EBITDA of 246 crore in quarter four which is 11% of sales as compared to 388 crore uh, at 15.5% year-on-year. For the full fiscal year of financial year 22, EBITDA stood at 1,425 crore, translating into an EBITDA margin of 15.2% as compared to 1,420 crore last year, which was 19.2%. During the year, input costs, had been increasing significantly, and the situation has escalated very adversely in the last two quarters, with commodity prices touching historical highs and logistical challenges uh, becoming an insurmountable. Coupled with this, the entire global economy is affected due to the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the inflationary pressures which has gripped the US and Eurozone after decades. These have put untoward pressure on margins of the company, especially in second half of financial year 22. In spite of these headwinds, with our drive towards cost optimization, use of technology and improved efficiency, we have been able to reach the same rupee EBITDA for the year as last year. Going forward, changes in the government's cotton import duty structure may deliver some net benefit for the industry in general. But any major shift in cost and costs might be seen only once the new crop season begins. Further, the cotton demand situation in India is further impacted by continuing exports of cotton from India. I'm also pleased to share that profit after tax after minority interest of financial year 22 rose by 11% to 601 crore compared to 540 crore last year despite the challenging environment in second half of financial year 22. Fat 
for quarter four of financial 22 was 52 crore as compared to 130 crore uh, year on year. Our consolidated earning per share for the year financially 22 stood at 6.06 per share, which is 13% higher as compared to last year. EPS of 5.37. EPS for quarter two stood at quarter four stood at 0.53 per share. Uh, these are V1.3 in the corresponding quarter last year. On the forex front, we have been consistently following the board of food policy to hedge around two third of our receivables on a rolling 12-month basis. Our average exchange realization for the U.S. dollar during quarter four was 77.43 compared to 76.14 in the corresponding quarter last year. For the financial year 22, it was 76.31, vis-a-vis 74.2 last year. Um, let me now share some balance sheet analysis. We continue our focus to reduce our net debt position, and at the end of quarter four and financial year 22, the company's net debt stood at 2,229 crore, down by 104 crore, from 2,333 crore as on 31st March 21. Excluding the flooring business related debt, net debt stood at 1399 crore as compared to 1637 crore, a reduction of 238 crore. As on March 22, we have in hand e scripts of ROSCTL lot debt amounting to 377 crore. Monetization of the same would have brought down our net debt further. Over the last five years, our net debt to SVT has come down to 0.5 times as on 31st March 22 versus 1.27 times as on 31st March 2017. Gross block spread 6,824 crore and we spent 543 crore on Apex during the year. Uh, return on equity for the company's business stood at 15.8% in financial year 22 as compared to 16.3% last year. And return on capital employed stood at 13.4%, which are 13.8% in financial year 21. In spite of investments in our growth businesses and buyback of shares turned during the year, net debt has remained below 31st March 21 levels. Coming to segmental results, Home textile revenue stood at 2,073 crore in quarter four, representing a year-on-year -year increase of 1%. For the full year financial year 22, the home textile business clocked revenues of 8,791 crore as against 7,128 crore in the preceding year, recording a growth of 23%. Additional margin for the home textile segment stood at 11.6% in quarter four, vis-a-vis 18% year-on-year and 16.1% in financial year 22, uh, which is down from 20.9% in financial year 21. The flooring business revenue stood at 189 crore in quarter four, representing a year-on-year -year increase of 60%. During financial year 22, the flooring business clock revenue of 661 crore, uh, recording a growth of 107% year-on-year. The business had a small EBITDA loss of 2.9 crore during quarter four as compared to a loss of 19 crore last year. For the full year 22, EBITDA has substantially improved to a loss of only 14 crore as compared to a loss of 100 crore last year. The expansion projects of flooring, advanced textile and home textile businesses, which were in different stages of progress, got near completion in financial year 22 with some balanced capex remaining. Capex spent in financial year 23 to complete these projects and for maintenance capex is expected to be around rupees 230 crores. In spite of the capex, the net debt of the company is expected to be around 2,100 crores in March 2023. We are providing the guidance in terms of capex net debt for financial year 23. However, in view of uncertainties around factors which we have discussed earlier, for example, fluctuations in input costs, including cotton, coal, and other raw materials, logistical challenges, and related costs thereto, and rising inflation in our target markets, 
the company is not in a position to provide any firm guidance for financial year 23 at this point in time at its meeting held today the board has approved a dividend of uh, 15% that is uh, 0.15 rupees per share the total outflow for dividend would be 148 million and this translates to 2% 2.5% payout on the consolidated bank Uh, with this, I will leave the floor open for your questions and hand over to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, please enter star and one on the attached room telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abhishek Nigam from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of questions. Oh, one Sorry, starting out. Sorry to interrupt, sir. There's a lot of disturbance coming through. If there's any external headset that you've used, we're going to give you a chance, please. Sure. Is this better? Yes, much better. Please. Okay. Perfect. So, a couple of questions. Uh, starting off with, you know, the revenue decline in the home tech side segment, I was just going through the presentation. It looks like a fairly, you know, broad-based slowdown across categories. So, you know, if you could just give some color on, on why utilization numbers are also down and what should we expect. In the in the coming quarter for first quarter, second quarter, that will be very helpful. So um, I think I, I'll take this question. Um, so the important thing, uh, let me just put you put you through, is that I think there has been a complete uh, uh, glut in the whole logistics uh, uh, that we have uh, we have seen. I think if you would know, uh, in United States of America, the West Coast was completely uh, completely choked. Yeah, East Coast was also completely in a slowdown. Looking, having said that, uh, the you know the holiday season goods also reached the retailers in the quarter four. As a result, there has been a glut uh, in their inventories. Their warehouses are choked. So there is a correction happening in the stocks as well. So while having said that, now if I look at uh, you know the whole um, costs that we are seeing in the terms of commodities. They are also playing a lot of, uh, you know, they, they are also instrumental in, uh, you know, the impact in the whole uh, revenue. But first, fundamentally, it is because of the stock correction that happened, and hence this is where uh, you are seeing the slowdown in quarter four. Looking at the, uh, you know, the onward uh, perspective as well, uh, definitely the commodities are going to play a major role. And saying that, I think everything is doubled. Um, over uh, what it was, and hence, uh, and inflation reaching like um, the Fed rates going up in America, the ECB in Europe, the rapo in India. I think overall, the situation uh, doesn't look that uh, go good right now. So definitely, demand would be a little muted. Okay, so some some timing issues, some demand slowdown, and logistics broadly those yes. three things will be. Responsible. Okay. And commodities, commodities. Cotton today is hundred thousand today, um, yeah. and uh, of course, I think the energy costs and everything also are playing, a, you know, uh, impact on everything what we do. Okay, fair enough. And you know, if you can just talk about, uh, given cotton prices have been so strong, what kind of price hikes were you able to sort of push through in the fourth quarter and and first quarter, and how is it looking now? So um, I'll tell you, we've already taken two rounds of price increases, and I think uh, we all are consumers. And when we buy a product, there is a ceiling to a price that you buy. So definitely, uh, you can't pass on all the price to the consumer because then the demand is anyway going to slow down. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree with that, uh, more or less. Fair enough. Yeah. And. Just last question from me. I'll, I'll probably come back in the queue. Uh, flooring has again slipped into a marginal loss. It's a small one, but I thought the, the you know it was kind of turning around. So just what has happened over there, and what should we expect for first quarter? 
So, uh, so it's the same story. Here, uh, it's the cost cost on on commodities which have been relentless through the year, and also the ocean freights, which have you know this, and it makes it difficult. See this, whether it is our home business or or whether it is the flooring business or uh, or the advanced materials business, bulk of our business is actually coming from the international market. So, you know, yeah. this when you when you on an average. Let's say stuff thirty, forty thousand dollars of merchandise in a container and end up paying six thousand to twelve thousand dollars in freight. So it it impacts the cost of ownership for for our customers and consequently the the retail prices have gone to a point now where let's say this uh, you know top line is 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 affecting. Same thing has happened on the flooring side as well. So so there's a commodity push. Uh, also let's say this uh, ocean freights have gone up and. And they continue to grow, go up uh, as we speak. So, so we are trying our best to, you know, this collaboratively work with our clients. And, uh, you know, this on the one hand you have to maintain, or let's say this maintain your your client profile, the strategic relationships that you have with them. And on the other, let's say this also manage the bottom line. So, so we have been trying to do this balancing act, and uh, you know, this taking uh, decisions accordingly. And the the loss here. So we would have broken even. There's some extraordinary charge. We had some uh, merchandise which got uh, damaged in transit. So, okay. so we had to take uh, provision on that. Otherwise, we would have been uh, positive EBITDA. But, uh, but uh, unfortunately, it happened in March, and and uh, the insurance claim uh, was was not uh, filed and, and approved. So, so we provided for the damage, but uh, uh, you know the consequent uh, credit was not accounted for. So, which is why otherwise we would have been in positive. But uh, you know, this we could have been much better had those commodity situations not been there. And and uh, to be honest, uh, I think the situation is going to be, uh, you know, this is going to continue the way we see it now, at least uh, you know for a quarter or two, because you know we don't see the commodity pressure abating. In fact, the ocean freights uh, will are actually going up because uh, you know our long-term contracts run out uh, this uh, this in April, some in May, some in June, and. And so, you know, consequently, the freights are actually continuing to move up. So, so we'll have to manage. It's a, it's a juggling act that we'll need to manage and uh, wait for an appropriate time uh, to, you know, this uh, go aggressively after margins than top line. So, so I, I guess, uh, uh, you know, this we are a, a quarter or two away from that. And uh, so, you know, all we are trying to do across our businesses is, is to manage, let's say, the top line and uh, and the margin so that. You know, as we get out of this uh, with our with our top line, which are business intact, with our clients intact, and relationships intact. So, look, what we are seeing is extraordinary. Now, you know, whether it be cotton or PVC or whatever, you, you are seeing prices at an all-time high. They can't sustain at these levels. Also, you know, this uh, the demand side, where people were actually locked down into their homes because of COVID. So, you know, the the, the people consume more products and less of services. I think. You know the consumption of services is now growing, and and consequently, let's say the disposable spend for for discretionary product is is reducing, and also this increase in prices have not not helped. So so all in all, I think uh, you know this over a things things will settle down. This uh, it looks like they will settle down, but you know we don't see it coming in the next quarter or two. But eventually, you know this they have to come to long term averages or thereabout and. And the margins will certainly resurrect once uh, you know we get to that situation. So, uh, but right now, this you know this we are actually right there in the in the eye of the storm, and uh, you know so it's 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 a difficult uh, situation, and it's it's actually navigating week to week, day to day, month to month, and and uh, client to client. So you know that's the way we are trying to manage our business. Yeah, no, no, I totally you know uh, agree and appreciate it. it's a tough one for uh, I mean everyone in the industry. So just one last follow-up question. This one-off cost related to the damage. How much was it in this quarter? I think about four crores or so. So okay. our EBITDA okay. loss is about three, and we provided for about three, four crores uh, on account of uh, the damaged merchandise. Okay, perfect. That's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Piplab Deparama from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, thank you. Uh, so my question is related to demand. 
So, how uh, what is your demand outlook in terms of you? You get, uh, you know, you get that cost and uh, some changes in the logistics. Uh, so, in terms of this, you're not clear, please. Hello. Yes, please proceed now. Ah. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so my question is on your demand outlook in the next uh, one year. How do you see the demand uh, across the segments in terms of volume? Do you see the same uh, level of demanding or going up, going down? Uh, any idea on the demand outlook? So the, the demand outlook definitely looks muted. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't look very encouraging for the next couple of quarters. That is quarter one, quarter two, and uh, and I think quarter three as you know because definitely there is going to be uh, that uh, kind of uh, uh, the visibility right now looks very muted because of the commodities also, um, and uh, I think post the holiday season is the time we definitely will see something uh, the the green shoots coming in. Anything from your uh Ma'am, uh, so uh, so we recently read uh, that uh, uh, we have signed India as a country has signed uh, ETA with uh, FT uh, uh, with uh, in Australia, and uh, so uh, did it, uh, do you think it will have any positive impact on uh, uh, you know uh, home textile business? Secondly, uh, we expect uh, if, uh, we are optimistic about FTA with Europe. So that would have any positive impact? So um, let me just put it to you. Uh, of course, they both will be very, very positive. Australia, we anyway do business. So definitely that's going to be encouraging for that business, that side. And FTA for UK also would be uh, will put us being competitive to the other countries that we compete with. Um, um, having said that, uh, USA remains the biggest market and the biggest, uh, con uh, uh, you know, uh, economy of uh, consumption. Uh, so um, I think that will play a very big role in the terms of uh, the whole demand as well. But yes, uh, to your question, uh, with UK, uh, FTA, we, we India is uh, here to gain, and Australia definitely is encouraging too. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. And one final question, if I... Uh, Ma'am, we know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the cotton uh, uh, cost are, are uh, uh, historical uh, all-time high. But this is the cotton cost. Uh, what other uh, factors are significantly impacting our market? We know that uh, energy cost, uh, logistics, but uh, are they too significantly impacting our margin? What are factors that are significantly most, impacting most our margin? Most definitely, Bipla, yeah. when... When ocean freight is 30% or or thereabouts of your container value, it is going to impact impact the business. So so every element, see this, and finally, you know, this everything adds up, isn't it? So your raw materials, your fuel, uh, the other commodities, the ocean freight, everything adds up, and finally, you know, it shows up at the door of the customer where you know the cost is already, uh, you know, the landed cost is already moved up by 50, 60, or maybe in some cases even doubled. From from where they were when the when when all this uh, you know this commodity cycle changed so 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 it's obviously going to impact both the top line as well as uh, as well as the bottom line. See the good thing, which uh, you know this I want all of you to know is that uh, you know the, the the overall India story is playing out. Uh, so so you know this this we have a dominant share for example in the U.S. where we have a level playing field with our competing countries. And we have, in fact, this our share has continued to to either get maintained or or only grow as a country. So, you know, the, the the overall story is intact. Now, if the consumption, this you know, based on whether the consumption is going to increase or reduce. So these are you know, this uh, a few quarter issues. So you know, as things correct, as prices correct, this consumption will automatically come back uh, in our key consuming markets like the U.S. and and when it comes back. Let's say both the top line and the bottom line will resurrect. So, so you know, it's a it's 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 a time, it's a period where you have to wait out. But let me assure you that you know the at the bottom, this I think the story is intact. There is nothing wrong. This uh, you know beyond a point, you can't you know this you can't move or increase prices without actually seriously damaging the top line. And you know this unfortunately we are right now caught up in that situation. So we have to wait it out. 
uh, we've had some 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 great years uh, in the past. So you know, there's some great quarters in the past, and you know, it's okay if we have a few rough quarters. Uh, you know, you have to ride through it and and uh, be two partners to our clients and and make sure that together we are able to you know just ride over this 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 difficult period. So you know, there's a quarter or two here and there, but eventually, as I said, the story is intact. Uh, India is in a very favorable position. Our cost structures are good. Our market share is intact. Everything is, you know. So the underlying story doesn't really change. And with the FTA, it will only improve now. This also, our, our uh, minister has gone on record to say this next year we are hoping now that the FTA with Europe could also materialize. And uh, we have discussion one with Canada, and you know, so 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 all these markets which are currently. Let's say this: we 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 have a disadvantage over some of the countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan. Now, if these FTAs also materialize, so you know it opens up another third of world consumption as as a level playing field for all of us. So you know, hopefully, as and when that happens, this uh, you know this as 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 a country, this uh, our, our position in the marketplace will improve. So you know, this repeating for the third time, I think the overall underlying story is intact. These are let's say this transitory. Uh, you know, there's uh, challenges. Um, you know, there can be a few quarters here and there, but the underlying story is intact. Uh, I'll come back in bit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Akshay Kothari from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks uh, for taking my question. So I wanted to understand, uh, right now you mentioned that uh, countries like Bangladesh and Pakistan, uh, if uh, there are FTAs, uh what i had been hearing is i think uh, us had sanctioned bangladesh for some issue and uh, uh, you know uh, that is likely to uh, get reversed so would there be impact and which are the other countries like vietnam or which are the other countries we are competing with so um i just tell you that you know with with usa uh, we are in a strong position compared to uh, countries like uk and europe where the fta has an advantage for them um okay. and uh, the category that we play with um uh, is the mi- middle to the uh, upper segment vis-a-vis bangladesh and pakistan are at the opp um so definitely i think for us uh, we we maintain a position there uh, so i think we we wouldn't be anyway uh, impacted by that okay okay in fact if the fcs come about we'll actually have an advantage yeah we'll add on more to our portfolio okay and uh, what would be the revenue from the top 5 or 10 customers uh, the customer concentration how much would it be contributing i think that would be major of the number uh, that we uh, we talk about it so that is something that uh, i think we are doing around 782 uh, million dollars in our uh, home tech side it's about 40 45 yeah so this we have a good mix of customers and you know this while okay. you know this in- big customers always remain important and and strategic but uh, this i think our our risk is pretty well spread and uh, so it will be about 40 45% okay okay thanks a lot i'll join back in the queue thanks thank you the next question is from the line of prathamesh from access securities please go ahead uh, yeah hi uh, so my question is regarding the truckers issue in us and canada so this problem was i think because of covid related reasons so i think with all covid gone do you think this problem is about to end in like next quarter or two um i think uh, it is not just because of the covid it is also because of the demand and the uh, the amazon uh, <laughs> amazon factor um they have basically hired most of the truckers and the prices are far dear like you would have heard about the 150000 dollars that they're paying the truckers uh so i think there is an issue of the availability of truckers and that still persists uh and um that is a concern um okay. and there is a lag there because a lot of goods after reaching the ports uh, have uh, have a concern um and there is lot of uh, detention uh, by the time it reaches uh, the warehouses as well okay uh and coming uh, to the cotton prices so one leg is definitely not going to be a sustainable price but what according to you will be a ballpark figure like two three quarters down the lane where will be a ballpark figure and do you think are you going to plan any backward integration for this thing because this thing has been giving trouble to you 
I think we are. Comp- I think for us, the cotton. If we, if I can look at it right now, where it is at hundred thousand, we we are we are very sure that it's not going to be the price. It's at its peak, but I think every time it defies that norm. We were looking at seven, sixty-five, then seventy-five, then eighty-five, then ninety, and today it's over hundred thousand. So, uh, but I think as as the sowing has started, uh, the harvesting will be in September, um, and the acreage has increased. But I still feel the floor will open at seventy thousand, not lesser than that. Uh, that's what it looks like at the moment. Uh, and when you talk about backward integration, I think for us at Wealth Fund, we're completely integrated as a company. Whether it's in our towels, whether it's in our sheets, or whether in our rugs, in fact, right now. So But you're partially integrated, if I'm not wrong. Thank you, Pardon. You're partially integrated, right? Like. A- Only forty percent of your raw material you source by your own. No, no, we, no, no. we don't grow cotton here, so we make our yarns yes, but we don't grow any yeah, yeah. cotton. So that's what I'm talking about the yarn. So you are using only forty five percent for your total capacity of that. You can use only forty five percent, right? Yeah, about sixty. Sixty or seventy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, in this current quarter, uh, there was this eight percent degrowth. So what amount of uh, what was the actual volume degrowth? Like, was there any offset because of some price increase? What was the actual? If you can bifurcate between the actual degrowth and the. So I think uh, look, you know, this quarter on quarter, uh, we we don't even analyze. We don't even bother analyzing. Yeah. So you know, these things can happen, and and uh, this this our, our contracts runs. Run for multiple years, yeah. So, so we don't look at our business on a quarter-on-quarter basis. And this, see, with the inventory up and down, things can, you know, one quarter can be extraordinary. The other, let's say, the inventory corrections can happen. So, I wouldn't read too much into into that. Okay, sir. That's it for my end. Get back in the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kalpesh Gothi from Valentis Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, in the last couple of quarters, we are focusing more on ESG fund. So my question, you know, your ambitions to us become a carbon neutral and the fresh water quality by 2030. So, uh, do you, can you elaborate more on this on the ESG side and no, what's the status know. of the wastewater treatment initiative? No, but I think for us, I would say we are water positive today as well. In fact, we just got the president's uh, award for that. Um, um, the uh, the carbon neutral, we have a roadmap for, for 2030, and that's what we we are looking at, and that's where we are working towards. So uh, definitely, and I think it is on our website. If you go and you can look at our goals there, uh, they are quite intact in the terms of our milestones that we are wanting to achieve. Yeah, and what's your uh, yeah? We are focused on moving. Uh, I think I can't hear you that clear. Can you? Yeah, am I audible now? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, and also we are speaking to renewable energy. Yeah, so we are working on that project, and uh, you will hear from us in a couple of months on that as well. Uh, having said that. Our goals towards the renewable energy also remain intact, because it is not only a commitment uh, towards what we what we do in, envi- in the environment, but it is also a commitment towards our retailers. Uh, that uh, uh, and those are the things that we are going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, fulfill as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prerna Chunjunwala from Alara Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, my first question is on your capex plans. Uh, your uh, bed sh- uh, towel capacity expansion of 25% to reach 1 lakh 2,000 tons per annum. Uh, where is it, and by when can we expect that to come in? So uh, this quarter, end of this quarter, we'll be there, and uh, and by and large. in fact uh, most of the capital expenditure is is either concluded or will get concluded uh, by september of uh, of the current year so we are very close to completing almost everything 
you know, this we have we have a current run rate of about 10 million. So uh, so we are between 40 or 40 percent of thereabouts. So you know, by and large, uh, we are there. But uh, you know, just uh, don't look at the utilization levels because look, this is a new business, and mind you, uh, you know, this the first two years of operation were all done within the period of COVID, where uh, none of our boys could could get in front of the customers. Uh, you know, forget about about uh, you know this developing a market. So 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 those are to our usi mein nikal gaye. So right now, see this. All we have done is open doors with uh, you know some great clients all over the world, and uh, and the product. So there's still a lot of product mix richness which is which is going to manifest itself. So we are right now at the uh, you know by and large at the lower to the uh, this middle end of the market, and uh, over a period of two three years, even the product mix will get richer. So the same amount of of yardage will actually deliver a higher let's say this uh, this uh, unit value realization. Apart from, of course, better utilization in the future. So, I hope that answers uh, your question. Yeah, yeah. So, a few, uh, some, some more related. I think when we put up this plant, after that, we had got some positive surprise of some uh, improvement in the demand from the U.S. markets after uh, some, <clears throat> some China exposed to the U.S. being slowly slowing down. So, what is the status of that, and uh, how can we see? Uh, do we see visibility of that? Exposed to the U.S. scaling up uh, on this flooring absolutely, business. Absolutely, absolutely, clearly, Deeraj. So, you know, and this time it is not only about prices. So, so we have seen this, this, this China thing uh, happening in the past as well. But this time, I tell you, it is different. So, you know, these large clients are actually afraid that their businesses might actually get disrupted if they are completely depending on China. And with, so, so they are. They, there is a strategic intent. And a program to to de-risk their sourcing, and and uh, we are continuing to see that. In fact, it's getting more more and more visible from more and more clients, and and so this time it looks like that it is here to stay. And the demand would be more from the soft flooring or the hard flooring from the U.S. market and export. More of hard uh, de-risk because offices. So yeah, obviously the soft flooring goes more into offices and right. cinemas and and uh, hotels and all that. So it did those. So it's bandi rahe. So so that part, uh, you know, so so it kind of was slow, and that also needs a physical contact with the clients, which unfortunately we could not make over the last couple of years. Our boys have just started traveling from January, and and you know, getting in front of the customers. So and also offices are are opening up. They have opened up hotels. Are, are you know, this running to some decent capacity. So now we are seeing, let's say, this uh, good traction build up. I think by the end of this year, uh, you know, this we should have our uh, our feet firmly on the ground on the soft loading side. So right now, I think uh, we are seeing more throttle on the on the hard side than on the soft side. But I want to qualify, let's say this my statement by saying that, you know, we are seeing the same kind of margin pressures in this business as well that we are seeing with the home business. And, you know, that this cost push is just so relentless that it's a everyday job to, you know, this do this balancing act between top line and, and margins and you know so which we are trying to you know this exercise our our best judgment and you know just push it forward but it is uh, this on the margin front we are struggling and you have seen that even at that 180 90 crores we have you know just badly managed to break even at EBITDA and you know the intent and the, the quality of the business is much better than that uh, Neeraj but you know unfortunately this the pressure of commodities ocean trades is uh, is putting a lid on the margins in this business as well. Got it. Thank you very much, Aishi. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas Jain from Equal Securities. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. The first question uh, uh, is in continuation to one of the earlier participants' uh, answer, where you said that you do have a very good uh, analysis on how to say that the retailers end up progressing. So, uh, any any color as to what is the end market or the end customer uh, demand looking like? As in, uh, more in terms of how are we seeing this supply glut to even out? In what period of time is the best estimate that this can even out? So, good question again. So, this we are this one thing we are definitely seeing is that it's a steady, uh, you know, this trickle. The the curve is actually in the reverse direction. So, you know, this I'm afraid. Uh, you know what we are seeing is a is 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 a constant 
let's say so the demand is reducing and uh, and, and i'm saying it is not only from our clients but our clients clients which is the final consumer and and you know the increased retail prices are uh, uh, and look our product is discretionary so the increased uh, retail prices are impacting and then the other factor is also that uh, this consumption of services is now let's say catching up so the last year and a half two years uh, in the lockdown period the services were not as much consumed so some catch up is happening on that side also so we'll get a clearer picture i think in the next 3 4 months when things even out when you know this you know the world returns to a steady state the services to product consumption pattern and and hopefully by that time the commodity uh, prices also correct so i think we'll get a better sense or better handle on that but uh, you know right now over the last 2 3 months what we have witnessed is a is a steady decline on on the point of sale so we see some you know this occasional spikes uh, when when products get promoted uh, very aggressively so we see these occasional spikes so you know that kind of levels and averages things out but you know this on 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 a on a general basis let's say this uh, you know the curve is tracking down okay 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 and one more question uh, that you mentioned in your opening comments or rather in one of your comments that the uh, the long term contracts for this uh, this containers are just about to end in like in april may and so can you just give a color as to uh, whenever you enter some new contracts uh, how how much surge that you can witness in these uh, these prices uh, or contract the normally if you ask if you had asked me this question a year and a half back it would have been the other way around every contract was at a lesser price so so then you know, now it's the it's the turn of the shipping companies to 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 draw blood and which they are you know this i must confess doing it brilliantly so uh, but you know this from 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 where we were last year to now it's almost 250% up so so uh, it's a very very steep increase and uh, you know so we are also we are even right now currently under negotiations uh, with the shipping lines and you know so all in all uh, you know this overall this and there was one renegotiation that happened in the middle of last year as, as well so you know that the, the freight rates have been constantly growing up but you know this uh, it, it, the things don't look very good here so overall you know from from one point from april or may of last year to now uh, you know this mm-hmm. is looking like uh, at least 200 250% particularly to the us it's not as bad to the other parts of the world in fact uh, in the other parts uh, you know freight rates have already started correcting so uh, to some extent so like for example latin america freights are are already tracking down far east the freights have started tracking down europe has kind of settled down uh, mediterranean is kind of settling down but uh, america this unfortunately is is very very strong right now and you know so we'll know as we close the contracts over the next uh, few weeks but you know this from from point to point from may to may this is 200 250% right right and just just one follow up uh, sir uh, uh, almost all of our uh, uh, shipments that we send to our retailers are uh, come under the long term contract or do have we have something uh, open uh, or we send it in like in, in open contracts uh, see, see 85 to 90% of our business is replenishment uh, so it's like your white shirt that you keep shipping this as as the customers sell their reorder and you know so the program continues till such time let's say the productivity on their shelf space is good and then when the productivity on the shelf space uh, starts dipping that's when let's say the transition of the program happens so 85 nepali uh, 85 to 90% of our business yes. should be like that right yes. yeah yeah it is and over to i think fob and cis is another combination So I think for uh, us um, at Wells Fund, um, you know, primarily 80% is FOB and 20% is CIF as well. So uh, okay. that that's okay. again a very important part of uh, you know our impact on our freight costs that have impacted us. Correct, correct, correct. Okay, thank thanks for the uh, answering the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. In the interest of time, this was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Dipali Goenka, Joint MD and CEO, Wellspin India Limited, for closing comments. Thank you. So I would like to thank you all for your insightful questions. As we stated earlier on this call, while our medium-term performance is likely to reflect the impact of a challenging commodities and logistics environment, 
As a business, we remain focused on transitioning from being a manufacturer to a direct-to-consumer company and FMCG of home textiles, enabled by investments in innovation and technology, and the strong traction we are already seeing in our B2C initiatives, our brands, and our digital channels. And we will achieve this while also ensuring that sustainability and circularity remains embedded across our value chain. I would like to conclude by thanking each one of you for your continued interest in Wealthpin India. Thank you very much. On behalf of Fiddlewise Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now just connect your lines.